Hello my friends, thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. So the coffee's on, that means that we can get this video started. And today's topic is bushcraft knives, maintenance and sharpening. I like to keep a dedicated field kit for my knife maintenance, something I can just grab and get to work. I have everything I need in here to keep my knives sharp and to keep my sheaths in good condition. I brought out a few different knives, a few different grinds. I'll give a short demonstration on each one and let's see what's inside this kit. So a good field kit doesn't need to be big and bulky. In fact, it shouldn't be big and bulky because it's supposed to be portable, right? So in here I keep a compound called Autosol. I also have some beeswax in this container. This is 50% beeswax, 50% mineral oil. I keep a few different grits of sandpaper. I have a small field strop with compound. A DC4 and a CC4, both from Falkneven. They're excellent little sharpening stones. This, I have to admit, I don't take with me all the time. But it's a workshop field sharpener, I believe it's called. And it is a great little field sharpener. So I just wanted to add that to the kit today to show you and demonstrate how it works. It's a great little field sharpener. And I also have a piece of compound and some chapstick. Well, how'd that get in there? But it actually is really useful for knives. So we'll leave that out as part of the kit. So let's start with this one, the LT Wright GNS. Now the reason why I chose this one is that it's a saber grind. Now saber grinds for some people are a little problematic because there are actually two bevels. This wide one here and then the bevel on the cutting edge. Now that could be a V edge or a convex edge. There's various edges. But some people get a little confused about what part to sharpen. And we're only going to be concerned with the very edge. This bevel right at the bottom. And I don't know if you can pick up, but this knife is showing signs of a little bit of tarnish, tarnishing, oxidization. We're going to look after that too. So first thing you want to do is a visual check of the knife. Now as I look down this blade, it looks in pretty good shape reflecting a little bit of light indicating that the edge is rolled a little bit and I like to run my fingernail along it as well and although I couldn't see very much it is rough so that indicates there might be some microchips or definitely slightly rolled edges now this is probably in perfectly usable condition but we want it perfect don't we so I think I'm going to use the Falcon even CC4 since this blade is in pretty good shape. CC4 is a double-sided ceramic sharpening stone and the DC4 has diamond on one side, ceramic on the other. The diamond being a little more aggressive. So I think we will start on the coarse side of the CC4. And what you want to do is when you're placing your knife on the stone, I'm going to do it towards you. You just want to tip it just a little bit until there's no light showing underneath the bevel. That's how you're going to be able to tell that you're at the proper angle. Now there's little tricks you can do like putting some black felt permanent marker on the bevel to make sure that you're getting it at the right angle. But I find if I look carefully, tilt it just a little bit so there's no light showing underneath the bevel, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. You have to be a little careful with the CC4. Keep your fingers below the top of the stone so you don't cut yourself. Alternately, you can place this on a log, carve out a small divot so it fits in the log perfectly and it doesn't move around. I'm quite comfortable just holding the blade like this. As I said, tip it just slightly so you don't see any light and keep moving it across the stone. Now as you move the knife, you're going to have to lift your wrist a little bit so you get the entire blade at the proper level. And as you move forward, you're going to get more experience and you're going to get some muscle memory on how to do this. 
And I'm doing it a little bit awkwardly because I'm doing it for the camera. But there's no need to rush. In fact, some people find this process quite relaxing. We'll do this side. You can do it in sections like this, or you can try and do the whole blade. Doesn't matter, long as you get the entire blade. Now already, with just those few strokes, I can tell it's in much better shape. There are no pronounceable nicks, and I'm just gonna work the rough side just for another few strokes on each side you move a little bit faster more like at my normal speed and if there's an area that you need to work a little bit more you can even work in a circular motion like this whatever you're comfortable with that feels very that feels very sharp Okay, it wasn't in bad shape to start with. So that was the coarse side. And you do leave small medical particles in the stone. Well, it's ceramic actually. So they just wipe off or wash them off with water. Now the fine side of the CC4 is very fine. Works very nice. You do get used to this kind of motion and you do get used to the angle. Now these ceramic stones don't require any water. That's why I like bringing them in the field, although I always have water. It's nice to have a stone that you don't need to add water to. That's very sharp. That knife is probably sharp enough as it is, but you always want to refine that edge slightly. And the best way to do that is with a strop. Strop is just a piece of leather. You apply some compound to it, which has a bit of a grit, and you run the knife over the strop. Now, when you're sharpening a knife, you're pushing into the stone, usually, when you're stropping, always pull away. Now I tend to apply a fair amount of pressure when I'm stropping, and I know it's recommended by a lot of people just to barely let the knife touch, just use the weight of the blade. And that is for good reason. It's so that you don't round the edge it's quite possible around the edge i like to use enough pressure to get the job done and if you have a, a thick very tough piece of leather that doesn't compress very much there's less chance of you over stropping and actually making your knife more dull as you sharpen it and strop it That feels very good. And as I mentioned, there is that bit of staining on the blade. I'll show you how I look after that. So to remove the stains, I carry this. It's called Autosol. And it's a little tip I got from Mr. Mike Barton. A lot of you may know him. And you can buy it in hardware stores or auto supply stores. And I guess it's for polishing paint. And it's for polishing, uh, let's say, the lenses on your car, your headlights. But if you're fussy and you like to keep your knives 
in good shape without oxid oxidization, it does a really good job of cleaning these flats. Now that oxidation that was on there is almost immediately gone using Autosol. It's a really good product. Some people like their knives to get colored up and oxidized. That's okay. No issues if you like it that way. I like to keep them polished. You have to be very careful. You're working on a sharp edge right now. It's best to work away from the edge. I was working towards the edge for the camera. So now that I have this knife sharpened and the and the flats cleaned up, you can see that that bevel has a nice polish on it since I strapped it. And the flats are in great condition too. So I'm certainly not going to take my jacket off to do this for every knife, but you know, this is sharp. It's removing hair off my arm without any issues. So that's a very sharp knife and looks very nice with that polished edge. So moving on to a convex grind. Now there are two ways that I look after convex edges in the field and both of them are very easy to do. Convex blades are not that difficult to look after. They tend to hold their edge a little bit better than some of the other grinds. So you have to sharpen them less often, which is a good thing. I'm gonna use the DC4 first. And this is a fairly pronounced bevel. It's very easy to determine the angle. And I'll usually take the stone to the knife okay so I'm going to start off with the coarse side of the DC4 this time and I bring it to the knife and once again I'm looking to close up any light on the edge and I move this in a circular pattern on the edge and I rock it a little bit because you want to make sure you're getting the entire bevel now this is very much the same way I sharpen an axe. I bring the stone to the axe, I put it on the bevel, and I move it in a circular motion. It's fairly easy to do. I'll move to the fine side of the stone now. And you get a feel for doing this actually. You can kind of tell by the sound that the stone is making if you're on the right angle. So the second technique is very simple. I do carry some sandpaper with me in my kit. Here's 400 and 800. At home I keep it all the way up to 3000 but that's probably good enough for the field. And we've probably all heard of the technique of sharpening a convex knife on a mouse pad with sandpaper. That works great. I don't really want to bring a mouse pad with me out in the woods. So I put the sandpaper on the leather side of this little field strap. And that, I believe, gives me just enough give to sharpen a convex knife properly using this method. Now when you're using the sandpaper method with a convex knife, you want to be using a strapping motion. This working the edge. Once again, it's a little bit more forgiving this way. You want to make sure you have your knife at the right angle. You don't want to have it sitting too high up because you'll be driving, dragging the apex right across the sandpaper. Of course, that's going to dull the knife easily. All that's left to do with this one is load up that little field strop. Give her a quick once over. Don't let convex blades scare you. They're not that difficult to look after. Some people say that they're easier to maintain than other grinds. They could be right. 
but it is a good idea to learn how to keep these in good shape that feels decent and honestly you don't have to worry about getting your knives hair popping sharp every time if they can cut paper easily you have a pretty good edge there let's try this one I'm running out of arm here I'm not taking my coat off it's a chilly day yeah easily removing hair off my arm So today I have River's sister Nova down here with me. She's a very good girl. She likes getting out with me. I want to thank all the new subscribers who have joined the channel. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like this sort of content, please hit the subscribe button. Please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out immensely. So next, let's look at this Scandi grind. It's a more companion. It's not in very good condition, I must say. I'm embarrassed to admit. You shouldn't let your knives go this long because they take a little bit longer to sharpen. Up until now, it's been a little bit of maintenance, and polishing up. This is a real sharpening job. So even in the field, it is possible to do a proper sharpening job. You need a stable platform for your small DC4. You can just carve a flat spot on a log that will keep the stone stable. The bevel of the Scandi needs to lay flat on the stone. You can feel it and simply move back and forth. As you get to the tip, you'll have to lift your wrist a little bit. Periodically, you want to check Make sure you're hitting the bevel properly. Usually the tip is a little tougher to get. But it looks like I'm hitting the bevel correctly. A lot of work left on this one, as you can see from the other side. But it is possible to do a proper sharpening in the field with just a DC4. So I've raised a burr on this already, which is very good to see. This little technique I saw on one of Ray Mears' programs works really good. Move on to the other side. So about 15 minutes later, using only the DC4, the edge has improved a lot. It's not perfect, but you're not going to get that in the field with such a small stone unless you work at it for a long time. But the edge is decent. I'm not seeing or feeling any imperfections. I'm just gonna bring it to the strop. And this time I loaded the strop with that auto sole that we talked about before. It's fairly abrasive. And I'll probably strop this Oh, 50, 60 times per side. So after a few minutes with a strap, it's not looking too bad, not perfect. I don't think it's hair popping sharp. No, but I think it's a perfectly acceptable edge for doing basic tasks. Like a feather stick. perfectly acceptable. So you can do a full-on sharpening in the field 
with just a DC-4 and a small field strut. So moving on, I have my Skookum Bush tool here and the blade, the knife is in very good condition, but the sheath is looking a little dry. Maybe could use a little bit of beeswax to regenerate it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. This works with any knife sheath or ax mask. Just get it near a warm fire. Warm up the leather just a little bit. It's getting warm already. When you get it warm, the leather will accept the beeswax more readily. So a little dab of this beeswax that I carry is all you need. Rub it into the sheath. At this point you can also bring it back to the fire, warm it up again. I'm not sure if I have to because it's soaking in pretty well right now. Yeah, that's looking pretty good actually. All the way around. Oh, looks good. And just give her a quick buff. You don't have to do this very often. Maybe once a year. You don't want to do it too often actually. If you see things starting to fade or crack, get in there. A few minutes will do wonders. So I did want to share this work sharp field sharpener with you guys because I think it's a pretty handy tool. Now it has a fine side and a coarse side. These plates are removable if you need to bring them to the tool. It has a strop on the back, it has a ceramic rod, and also has a smaller ceramic rod right here for doing serrated blades. Coarse, fine on the rod, and also an area for sharpening fish hooks. And what's great about this are these ramps here on either side. These are set to 20 degrees. It helps you determine a 20 degree angle great for your pocket knives, great for SE knives. You just lay your blade flat against that ramp and sharpen. Helps you develop that muscle memory. Works best on smaller pocket knives, obviously, because it is a small tool. Reverse it. Very easy. I mean, this is the type of thing that if you've had your pocket knife out, you could just touch it up if you've used it for a couple hours. And coming up to the strop, lay your strop against that ramp, lift it up, and now you're stropping away from you at 20 degrees. If you want to put a quick secondary bevel or simply hone the edge quickly that's what this ceramic blade is for. And that's set to 20 degrees as well. Very decent tool, worth having, that's for sure. That's sharp. At home, I use different things because I can do a more precise job. 
I use this Lansky sharpening kit on occasion, not on all my knives, just some knives. If you use it carefully, use it properly, you will get a beautiful edge on your blades. Just go through all the stones and you will get a gorgeous edge. I more often use this Japanese water stone. This is a King 1000 and 6000, I believe, with a Naguri stone. I like these products for keeping your blades rust free the leather and the handles, they work really well and they're all natural products. Another Lansky product, these keep the ceramic rods at either 20 or 25 degrees, whichever you prefer, you can hone an edge beautifully. Now if you want to get a sandpaper sharpening kit going, what I did, I went to a home supply store, I asked for countertop samples. So this is Corian, it's perfectly flat, it's very hard, with two-way tape, just tape some sandpaper down to the Corian and you have a sandpaper sharpening kit that will serve you very well. There's my field sharpening kit. It's compact, but it carries everything I need to keep my knife sharp and well maintained in the field. You know, it's not perfect. In some ways, it's a bit of a compromise. You can certainly do a better job once you get home using some of the other tools I showed you, but it will do you very well to keep something like this on you in the field. It will keep your knives sharp and shiny. Now, is there anything else that you carry that's not in my kit? Leave a suggestion down below. I know that we all have our own ways to maintain our knives. The way I do it may not be the way you do it. Keep on doing what works right for you. So thanks very much for watching. It is very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe right here by clicking on this icon. That would be much appreciated. A thumbs up helps the channel immensely. But most of all, please leave a comment down below about your sharpening kit, about what you think I could add to mine. Let's start a discussion in the comment section down below. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. It won't be long. Take care until then.